beautiful and wonderful day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, we want to start off our worship session and uh, before that we'll just read a scripture from the book of Isaiah chapter 42 verses 8 and 12. Isaiah 42 8 and 12. It says, I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. 12. Let them give glory to the Lord and proclaim his praise in the islands. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. Let us give glory to the Lord and proclaim his praise in the islands. Hallelujah. This morning we are being urged to just give all the glory to the Lord. For who he is, for what he has done, for his faithfulness and every attribute that belongs to him. Hallelujah. The Lord deserves all the honor. We are the creation, the work of his hands. And he has created us to honor him alone. And in whatever we do, let us ascribe all the glory and honor to him alone. Praise the Lord. 
I believe that this morning our hearts are going to sing out to the Lord with a lot of joy and gratitude because he deserves it. Praise the Lord. We are going to honor him just for who he is. And we know that he's going to do great things in our lives. Praise the Lord. Shall we bow down for a word of prayer? Mighty God, everlasting King, the Lord who reigns over all the earth, the creator of heaven and earth, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, Jehovah Adonai, our shepherd and our king, we stand before you this morning to thank you, Jehovah, because of who you are. Lord, we ascribe all the honor, all the praise to you, my God. Father, Lord, we have seen your goodness in our lives, Father. Thank you for today's gathering, Lord. We are gathering here, Lord Jehovah God, Father, to display your works that you have done this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Thank you, Lord, for good health. Thank you, Father, for the miracles that you have done in our lives, Father. Thank you, Father, for enabling us, oh God, to be here this morning. Thank you, Lord, for carrying us, oh Lord, throughout the week, my Father. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe by your mighty hand, my God. Thank you for covering us and protecting us all through Jehovah God. We are so thankful that you are our God. We are so thankful that you are our Father. We are so thankful that you are everything to us, oh God. Father, you are the Lord God of all providence, my Father. Jehovah God, we bless your name this morning. Father, standing in your presence, my God, we want to dedicate this gathering, this service before you, oh dear Lord Jesus, asking that may you take charge, oh God. May you have your way, Holy Spirit of the Sovereign God, because we belong to you, Father, and this service belongs to you, Jehovah God. How we pray that God, in all your sovereignty, my Father, in all your wisdom, Oh my God, may you take charge and lead us all the way, my God. We are depending and counting on your power, my Father. We depend and count upon your grace, mighty Father. For we know that without you, Lord, we cannot make it, oh dear Lord. We pray, Jehovah, that you hold us with your right hand, oh God. Your hand of righteousness, oh dear God. Lead us through Jehovah to the glory and honor of your holy name, my Father. We pray that, Father, as we open up our hearts, oh God, may your Holy Spirit Spirit take over, Lord. May you minister to us, Almighty Father. We are all poured out for you, O King of Glory, for you to come and reign, my Father. We trust and hope in you alone, Jehovah God, because you are great and greatly to be praised, my Father. You are so faithful. I just want somebody to just lift up their voices to the Lord of Lords and just honor him with your own words and ask the Holy Spirit to take charge and ask the Lord just to speak and minister to us in a mighty way, in a new way that we'll hear the voice of the Lord this morning, that the Holy Spirit will touch and heal somebody today, that the Lord will encourage us and give us hope today, that we will meet with the presence of the Lord, that we are going to fellowship with the Holy Holy Spirit because he is faithful, because he is in this place to minister to us. He is in this place to turn around our lives and to touch us. Father, we thank you yet again. We bless you, Jesus. We honor you. We give you praise, Jehovah. No one is like you, my Father. Blessed Savior, we give you praise and honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody give a mighty clap to the Lord. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine.
Have you heard what the Lord has done? The Lord has given us victory this morning. We just want to lift him higher. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us the victory. That's why we say, oh, say, yeah. Have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us the victory. And that's why we say, oh, say, yeah. Oh, say, yeah. He has given us the victory, and that's why we say, oh, say, yeah. Have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us the victory, and that's why we say, oh, say, yeah. Oh, say, yeah. Oh, say, yeah. Jesus higher, higher. Lift 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 Jesus higher, higher
Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We worship you, Jehovah. Nis. Thank you, Lord Almighty. We never want to be cut off from any Asante. Yes, we are still in this fight. We are not going to give up. 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 Okay, but I'm trying to allow a Santa Coy Marco, a Santa Cofadini Zako Jova, a Santa Cojins, you leave them cool for me, a Kuna Mingine Kamo Jova, to Nakua Budu Man only Tumba to Kua Budu, to Nakuino Mana Kuna or Queen Uloya Jova, a Santa Jova Nisi, who carries Sifano in Ulia Munguangu, or when in Munguangu of Bayangu, Sijana Mingine Kamo Jova. Ana ependeza ana inua ni wechova Asante mfama mani buwana Okay, buddy, I'm trying to wale wechova Tuna kwa budu na kukuinu wa yesu Mana mungu wangu kwa mani ya pesu Mana akikabwana matende ya koli maku Akikabwana muashanga za wengi chova Akikabwana unatujua kwa majina mfalme Asante kwa mana mungu wangu chova Niwewe ulie mku mfalme Niwewe tegemewe tu mfamu wachabu Asante yesu inuliwe na wabudiwe Mana Na weni mfalmo ezali baba Kukia sifa zote mano natosha joba Asante mungu amani yesu Asante buwana, asante joba Asante buwana Asante joba na sahili baba Akure Akure kamawewe Hallelujah Jesus, we bless your name Lord Yes Lord Thank you Jesus Well, when you were Jesus, oh Jesus, who may wash and go to the wind, oh Hakuna, Ali, come away, Mungu Angu, oh when you were Jesus, who may wash and go to the wind. 
Thank you, Jesus. Akuna mwingine wa kufananishwa na wewe mfalme wa ajabu. We lift you, O God, above every other thing of King of Kings. We magnify you, Jesus. You deserve all the honor. Mighty are you, King of Kings. You are exalted, you are lifted above us. You are lifted over all the kingdoms, my Father. We worship and we honor you, mighty Father. Thank you, Lord. You are great in all your ways. You are wonderful, my Father. You are majestic in power and holiness, O oh God. We adore you this morning, God. We exalt you, Father, for who you are. Was tired of sin for more. Was tired of the people more than more. She kept her emotion, shattered her head. Where were you from? Where were you from? Where were you from? I could not have been any sure that we went to home. You are worthy, O God. You are mighty, Jehovah. You are able, King of Kings. You are great, oh Lord. You are wonderful, my Savior. Who can compare to you, oh dear Lord? Who can compare to your power? How linganish you for me? How fananish you na jojote wa? Who make it to you a mamlaka yote wa? Who make it to you a weza wote for me wa job? Who to kufu na kufu ni zako zote? Oh Lord, we honor you. We bless you, King of Glory. We worship you, Father. We exalt you, mighty Father, because you reign. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We bless your name. We love you, Jesus. You are worthy, King of Kings. Give us a catch. Where we need to my relay to form a watch up. Do not cook in William Channel alone. We declare that you are the Lord. We declare that you are the King. We declare that you are our refuge, my Father. And none can compare to you, O oh Lord. And none can stand against you, my Father. You are great in power, my Father. You are our hope this morning, dear Lord. Our strength, O oh King of glory. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, God, just for who you are, my Father, the mighty creator that is who you are, a beautiful king. We worship and magnify you, Lord. We adore you. We lift you, Jesus. To no queen of one of my one, to no kupasifa zote wari mungu wa majeshi, to no kuaburu one. We exalt you, Lord. Was tiny Chara and Elmo, was tiny to put water more. Nanny was pulling any shore away. Give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. You are Jehovah Adonai. Zinna la coli me abudi. Zinna la coli me inoli. Zina 
Lord and above every other name. We lift you, oh God. We magnify you in this place, Jesus. And we declare that you are great. Everlasting God, we worship your name this morning. Dear Lord, besides you, there is none other to be worshipped. Besides you, Lord, there is none other to adore. No other God to love. No other God to bless than you, oh dear God. Faithful Redeemer, we worship you. Mighty King, we bless your name. Glorious King, we worship you. We reverence your holy name, O oh God. You are seated in glory, my Father. You reign in power and majesty, Lord. And you proclaim in your word that you do not share your glory with any other. You do not give your praises to graven images, my God. We worship you for who you are. You are great this morning, God. It is our declaration this morning, Father that you are indeed lifted, O oh Father. In our lives, Father, in this place, in our families, you are exalted, God. In this church, you are magnified. In our nation, you are the King, my Father. And there is none to compare to you, O oh God, because you say that you are the beginning and the end, my God. You are the mighty creator, my Father. Thank you, Lord, because you are powerful in all your ways, O oh God. You are mighty in your strength, my God. And we worship you this morning, Lord. We surrender our families to you, dear Father. This morning, Lord, we choose to honor you, God, with our families, God. We choose to proclaim that we, with our families, we are going to serve you, Jehovah God. We, we choose to say that, God, you are the God of our families this morning, dear Father. How we surrender, God, our children to you, dear Father. How we surrender, God, our families entirely to you, my God. Father, we are trusting you for restoration, O King. We are trusting you, Lord, for revival in our families, my Father. We are trusting you for great healings in our families, Jehovah God. Thank you, dear Lord, because you are doing it, O oh my Father. You are able to do much more than we think, O oh God. You are able to do exceedingly and abundantly, my Father. Thank you, Lord, because we are asking you to intervene in our families, my God. In every challenge, my God, you are the solution given, my God. And that is why we are calling on your name. For whosoever shall call on your name shall be saved this morning, dear Father. Thank you because you are our fortress, Lord. You are our strong tower, my God. When we run to you, we are going to be served, my Father. We bless you, God. We give you glory and honor. Thanking you, Lord, even for our children who are doing the exams, Lord, my Father. We pray that, Jehovah God, you shall go before them, my God. Give them the spirit of excellence, my God. Give them, Lord, my Father, your spirit to guide them, Jehovah Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Father, for good health upon them, my Savior. We pray, Jehovah, for strength upon them, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, dear God. We thank you this far, oh dear God. If not your mighty hand on our side, Lord, we wouldn't be here right now. But we want to declare that you have been the God of this nation, my Father. Lord, we acknowledge that other gods are the works of men. And that, Lord, we will not bow to idols, my Father. We choose to trust in your holy name, Father. Where others are trusting in horses and chariots, my God. Our hope is in your name this morning, God. Our trust is in your holy name, O King of Kings. May you stabilize our nation politically, O King of Glory. For we know that peace comes from you, 
oh dear God, my Father. That is why we are calling on your name this morning, King of Kings. Restore peace upon this nation, Lord, my Father. Secure this nation, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, my Father. Let your peace reign, oh God, in this nation, my Father. Let your peace be within our borders, my Father. Let plenty be found within our borders, Jehovah God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh God. We want to, re to remember other nations, Lord, that are seeking for peace but cannot find it, oh God. Your word says that when the foundation are shaken, oh God, where shall the rushes go, my Lord? Father, we choose to call on your name this morning. On behalf of Ukraine, oh God. On behalf of Russia, my Father. On behalf of those nationals, oh God, my Lord. We call on your name for the citizens that are suffering, my Father. For lack of peace, dear God. Your word says that you are the one that gives peace, oh dear Lord, that transcends all human understanding, my God. Jehovah Shalom is your name. May you cause your peace to reign upon those nations, my Lord. May you restore stability in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We arise against every destructive powers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For we know that Jehovah God, you are all powerful and mighty, my Father. We pray for them, O King of glory, that they may turn to you, O dear God. You are the only God that knows how to restore peace. You are the only God that knows how to reign, O my God. And we ask you that king of glory you will intervene that lord you may bring peace upon their lives my god in the name of jesus christ my father your word says that the, when the enemy comes in like a flood, your spirit shall turn him away, my God. Thank you because you are raising a standard, oh God, of the nationals there that God is seeking your name, my God. And we choose to stand with them this morning, dear Lord. And we know that when we call on your name, Father, you shall fortify them with your power this morning, dear Lord. Blessed be your holy name, oh God. Father, we lift the body of Christ in the whole world before you, oh God, that we'll be able to stand as one and pray and seek you, O oh God, that you may come and reign, my Father, and restore order to your people, Jehovah Lord, for there is none like you, God. We give you honor, we give you praise, because you are worthy and you are great. There is none like you, Jehovah God. You deserve all the praise, Jehovah. You deserve all the honor, King of kings. We adore you, we bless you, we worship you, we magnify you. You are the Lord, you are the King. There is none like you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, believing and trusting. Amen. Father, thank you. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome Pastor to proceed from here. Let's appreciate the Lord for him. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, God bless you. We may take our seats. And uh, in case you are there and this is your first time to be with us, uh, apart from the visitors from Europe, I request you to, start, uh, to raise up your hand. We extend our warm welcome to you. Uh, feel at Jesus' feet. Welcome to New Life Mission. We have uh, our senior pastor with us. And uh, I also understand we have, uh, we have uh, our, our candidates are just about to do their exams. So our senior pastor will greet us. Then he can pray for the candidates. We have the standard eight and the form four. You can uh, pray for them. I'm glad to be back. We, uh, I'm glad also that we had an opportunity to start the year together with you this time. Uh, we spent the new year here, the Christmas year. We spent some months in the, in the end of 2021. And we had the opportunity to begin the year together, which I feel very privileged for. Uh, as many of you know, I'm uh, Carl Eric, the senior pastor in this church and uh, in the other churches that we have around Masaini. Uh, some of you went with us there in, uh, in uh, November to open a, a new church. And I think we are planning to open another one on this coming Sunday. Well, that will be good. Uh, I believe that this year will be a year of harvest. Um, this is a year of soaring. We are soaring of the wings of God. We are climbing higher and higher and higher. 
But as we climb higher and higher and higher, that doesn't mean that we, we don't deal with the things on the ground. <laughs> Are you with me? Some people, they want to climb higher and higher and higher and we're close to God, and that's fine. I also want to sit at the feet of God, but I should not forget the ones living on the, on the earth. Are you getting me? Some people, they become so religious that they don't see the people around them. I know I was a bit tough on you when I left for Sweden <laughs> when it comes to reaching the unreached people, when it comes to, to, to really go for the ones who are in our neighborhood. I believe this year should be a year where we, where we, where we bring in the sinner to the church much more than what we are doing. I'm so glad to see all of you. But when we raised up the hands today, we saw one or two hands. Indio. The, the, the rest of you are a um, member of the family, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, I, I love to have uh, family gatherings in Sweden as well, but after two hours I'm a bit tired. <laughs> because I know their stories. Are you getting me? You bring in the relatives. I used to say relatives, they are, I want to have them on the picture, but with the picture turned towards the wall. And they don't love, like me because I say that. But you see, relatives and families, I have them around me all the time, isn't it? I know their stories. I know their testimonies. I know if they have a testimony or if they don't have a testimony, isn't it? You know, the time I enjoy is when I sit around the table with new people that I have never seen before. Because I will learn something. I will be excited to hear about them. I can give them something. You know, my family, I have given them so much that, you know, they're almost kunatabikas hasa. You have fed them and fed them and fed them until they don't even, they're not even satisfied. They're not even appreciating what you give them. The same thing is with the church, my friend. I'm glad to see you. But I want, I'm looking for that day when the sinners... Are, are coming to church and we who belongs to the church have to wait outside and give space to the ones who have never received Christ before in their life. I want to see a revival. Because we are praising God and we are singing doesn't mean we have a revival. Revival is when sinner comes to Christ and they are waking up and they give their lives to Christ. Uh, and when those days come... You have to sit outside in the tent while we are ministering to the sinners. Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what church is about. So we, we are going to focus on that. We are going to focus on that and, and, and work on, on those things. Father in heaven, I come before you on behalf of these young youth children that are taking their exams this time at standard eight and at uh, form four, Lord. We uh, give them into your hand, Father. We know that education is something that will, will, will build them and that will take them farther in life. Therefore, Lord, give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so they might understand not only what their exams are about, but also give them what you are, Lord. We devote them into your hand, Father. As they sit there for their exams, God, you, you help them. You give them everything that they need, Lord. Let them understand. Let them don't come under pressure. Let them not become frustrated. Let them not become worried. Lord, just give them peace. And as they open their books, Father, they will just see and it will flow in their lives, Father. I pray that for all the children from this church, Father, from the families that are gathering here, Father, I pray that in Jesus' name, trusting and believing. Amen. Amen. Uh, it is important that uh, God has given us opportunity to hear from him. Uh, when we come for a Sunday service or any other service, there is a part where we minister to God through worship. And now we get to the part of the service where God speaks to us. And uh, I know all of us are hungry for him. We want to hear what he has for us today. We want to hear what uh, he is uh, thinking about us. And so I pray that uh, as I share, may the Lord speak to you. May the Lord speak to me. 
so that uh, our lives shall never be the same. I would like us to open our Bibles, the first book of the Bible, that is the Genesis, uh, the book that uh, means uh, beginnings, and it's where everything began, it's where God created everything, it's a wonderful book, chapter 28 will be our text, Genesis chapter 28, and uh, I will tell you the verses that we are going to read. But uh, before I tell you the verses, uh, let me introduce the title of my message. Uh, I'm going to talk about the cost of soaring, how much it costs to soar. Because this is a year we are believing God that we shall soar. And as I said in the beginning of the year, soaring simply means uh, rising up in the air. Like when the plane is taking off after moving on the, on the ground, it takes off and starts uh, moving up. And we can say the plane is soaring, the plane is going up. So this is the year of going up, and we believe, God, it is going to be so. That it shall not be just uh, talking about it, but it shall be realized in our lives. There are many areas I am trusting God that we rise. Uh, our senior pastor just talks about one. Uh, that is uh, reaching out to the lost souls. Uh, as we continue to share, we will come to that, that we, we will be able to reach to the lives that are lost outside there. So when we talk about the cost of soaring, I'm talking about uh, what does it take to soar? You know, when we needed to buy this podium, we went to the workshop where they normally make them, and we asked, uh, we asked how much does this cost? And so we had to pay the price, then we get the item. And I remember my son, when he was young, one time he asked me, how much uh, does the V8 car cost? I don't know how much it costs. If you find it, you can help me. He said it's glorious. It's a nice car. You know, it's a four-wheel drive. It's a big car. <laughs> and he was telling me, if we use this one, we will not be stuck the way Sometimes it happens when we go up country. So he wanted to know the price. And uh, after knowing the price, he asked me, can we, do we have that amount of money so that we pay and get the car? So how much does it cost for us to soar? How much does it cost each one of us to soar in uh, every area that we are desiring that God may help us? So let us read verse 10 to verse 16. Of Genesis 28, verse 10 to 16, uh, looking at the cost of soaring. Let us read together. Jo Jacob left Beersheba and, uh, and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and uh, lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on earth with its top reaching, the, uh, reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord. He said, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you the, uh, and your descendants the land on which you are laying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west, to the east, to the north, and to the south. All people on the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you, and you will and I, and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done that which I have promised you. When Jacob awoke, uh, awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. Let us pray. Father, we are very grateful as we, we look at uh, these verses. 
May you help us to understand what you are sharing. May you help us to know what you desire. May you help us not only to hear the word, but also to apply the same in our lives. I dedicate myself to you, Redeemer and Savior, that you may give me utterance, that you may give me wisdom, that you may give me favor, that as I communicate your word, may your word come out with the power to change and to transform so that every life shall be helped, every life shall be transformed. To the glory and to the honor of your name, in Jesus' name we pray. And the child say amen. Why don't we put our hands together and celebrate the Lord as we look forward to hear the word of God right now. So we are looking at a situation that happened during Jacob's time. Uh, the Jacob we are talking about here is a brother to Esau, is a twin brother to Esau, and uh, both of them were sons of Isaac. Isaac was son of Abraham. So some of us have an idea of what happened, that when these two twins were born, uh, Esau was the firstborn, and he was supposed to receive the inheritance, but something happened that Jacob uh, took the inheritance and things were not going right because uh, there was envy between the two brothers. Esau was seeking to kill his brother. And so their mother, Rebecca, organized that Jacob uh, must flee and uh, leave the country so that uh, his brother doesn't kill him. So Jacob's life was in danger. Jacob's life was threatened. And I don't know whether you have ever been threatened. Threatened to the extent that you feel your life is under threat. This is what Jacob is going through. And I don't think it's a very comfortable kind of life to be threatened. And so he has to flee. He has to run away. The mother has organized that he goes to the uncle that is a Laban in the land of Haran. And so he has begun on this journey that is a full of uncertainty. He is not sure whether he will get there. He is not sure whether things are going to be right. He doesn't know whether when he goes, he will ever come back. And so his life is full of uh, uncertainty. Then he walks the journey, and a time comes when uh, the evening comes. The sun has set. And possibly there are no houses. The place is just desert, and he has to find a place to sleep. Then the Bible explains that uh, he found a place and uh, decided to sleep there. Then he took one of the stones and laid it as a pillow. And I'm just trying to think about uh, somebody using a stone in the place of a pillow. Because you need a soft, you know, soft material to use as a pillow where you can be able to sleep nicely and enjoy your sleep till the next day. But this place is so uncomfortable that he has to use a stone. And I don't know how many of us are going through uncomfortable season. Maybe you are not enjoying your life anymore because there are things that are happening which are not, uh, you know, in accordance to your expectation. I believe this is not what Jacob desired. But in the place where he found himself, there was no comfort. There was no bed. There was no house. There was no pillow that he had to use a stone in the place of a pillow. You may be there and maybe you are telling me, Pastor, you don't know, I never slept last night. Because, uh, yes, the bed might have been comfortable, but maybe there are issues that are pressing you that you did not enjoy your sleep. But I want to encourage you, my brother, my sister, that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Your morning is coming very soon. Your dawn is just about... So just trust in the Lord, just as uh, Jacob did. He slept, and during the night, something happened. The place that was very uncomfortable, God opened the heaven for him, and he was able to see things that uh, every one of us would like to experience. The Bible says he had a dream, and in the dream there was a, a ladder. There was a stairway that was connecting where he was sleeping, to the heaven, a very uncomfortable place, but the presence of God was there. Hallelujah. I want to assure you, God is in this place. May he minister to you in Jesus' name. 
I may not know what you are going through, but God knows it all. I may not know where you slept last night, but God knows it all. I may not know the experiences you are in, but God knows everything about you. So in a very uh, uncomfortable place where there was no comfort, where there was no blanket, where there was no bed, where there was no house, where there was no pillow, God's presence was there. And let me tell you, God's presence makes the whole difference. He saw a ladder. And this ladder was connecting the right place he was to the heaven. And uh, th something was happening within the ladder. That there were angels of God that were ascending and others were descending, going up and coming down. Taking the message from where he was to heaven and coming down, bringing response. And up there, there was God, who is the, the father of, uh, of Jacob. He's the father of Abraham, his grandfather. And this God started speaking to Jacob. Uh, I was looking at the promises and I was saying, wow, wonderful promises. How many of us desire to be spoken to by God? Of course, all of us. Everybody would like to hear God speak. And so in this place, God spoke to Jacob. And what did he tell him? These are the wonderful promises that he gave him. Number one, the land on which you, leave, you lie, I will give it to you and your offspring. Wow, how many of us want to have land? God is telling this man, I give this land to you. Where you are sleeping, it is given to you. The title deed and everything, I will give it to you and your children. What other promise is he given? Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. I have just said there was a lot of uncertainty. He was not sure whether this journey was going to end. He was not sure he was going to survive. And so God tells him, let me tell you, Jacob, your offspring shall be as the dust of the earth. In other words, God is telling him, you will survive this situation. You will not die. You will survive, and I will bless you. Right now, you don't have a wife, but I'll give you a wife. Right now, you don't have children, but I'll give you children. Right now, you may not have grandchildren, but they will come to you. What a promise, hallelujah, that I will take care of you. Promise number three. You shall spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, and to the south. Uh, Jacob is being told that uh, I will bless you so that your offspring shall spread to the west, to the east, to the north, and to the south. In other words, God is telling him, you are going to be a great man. Your children will spread. They will inherit the west. They will inherit the east. They will inherit the north and also the south. And another promise, number four, is through you all families of the earth shall be blessed. Somebody who has nothing, he has no money with him, he has nobody with him there. Yes, he has been blessed by his father, but God is assuring him that I will make you a blessing. And let me tell you, you cannot be a blessing until you are blessed. In other words, you can't give what you don't have. So God is telling him, I will endure you with a lot that you shall be a blessing to the nations of the earth. Number, number five. Behold, I am with you and will keep you and will bring you back to this land. God is giving him what, I don't know whether you have ever heard God speaking and he tells you what you really want to hear. So Jacob want to hear this news that God will take care of him where he is going and he will preserve him to come back to the same place. And the last promise is, I will not leave you until I have done that which I promised. May that happen to you in Jesus' name. I will not leave you until I accomplish what I have promised. Wow. Let me tell you now. Now look at me. God will not leave you until he accomplishes what he has promised you. Has God ever spoken to you? Even through preaching like I am doing, I want to promise you that he will not leave you until that message, until that promise is fulfilled. And this reminds me of uh, the book of Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, which says, God will complete 
the good work that he has started in your life. So wonderful promises, wonderful promises are given to Jacob. I will bless you. I will make up you a blessing. I will preserve you. You are going to survive. Where you are going, things will be okay. I will take care of you and you will come back to this place. But where is she? He is sleeping in the wilderness. A place where there is no comfort. A place where there is no house. A place where only animals, snakes, scorpions are common. Then there's something here that attracted my attention. That when he woke up, when he woke up, now the dream is over. When he woke up, this is what he said. He said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I didn't know. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Where you are seated, the presence of God is there, even though you didn't know. Let me tell you, you may be going through a very tough time. And you wonder, where is God? Sometimes when things are tough, we ask, where is God? Let me tell you where he is. He is right there. And he is at work. Praise God. Very uncomfortable place. There is no bed. There is no pillow. There is no bed sheet. There is no blanket. But God's presence is really there. So he says, wow. The presence of God is here. And I didn't know it. Hallelujah. Now let me come now to where I want us to look at things. God has just promised wonderful things. And you may expect that uh, where he goes, everything will just work very well, very well, very well, very well. By the way, he's going to meet his uncle. His name is Laban. And Laban is a deceiver. Laban is a con man. Laban is, those, uh, is that kind of a, a person who takes advantage of others. So Jacob gets there. He meets his uncle, Laban, and the life begins for one month he's there. And uh, maybe he was given uh, comfort the, la the first day. Siku ya kwanza, labda hakupewa kazi. But from the following day, he was assigned work. Ugeni imeisha. Work. He had to work. And he worked for one month without a pay. Then after one month, they entered into agreement with Laban. You know, Jacob loved one of the daughters of Laban, that is uh, Rachel. And so they talked about the daughter. And uh, Laban said, if you want to have Rachel, serve me for seven years. A wonderful deal. Seven years. And Jacob was willing to do it. So he served Laban for seven years. Then when it came to the time to receive Rachel, he was shortchanged. He was given Leah, the one he did not want. Now, you wonder, is God still with him? Is this the God who promised to be with him? Is God still performing his promises upon him? God is still there. So Laban tells him, if you want to get Rachel, serve me for another seven years. But God is still with him. We have said, <laughs> this is a year of soaring. <laughs> and you may be wondering, what kind of soaring is pastor talking about? Because the things I'm experiencing are contrary to what was said. I am here to tell you, there is a price to pay. So, in other words, he served 14 years for Rachel. And that is round one. I hear a politician this time saying, round one. Now we get to round two. <laughs> After serving for 14 years, now, you know, the deal is over. Now he has to, they have to agree again. What will he be getting as wages? And Laban is not willing to be very clear that you'll be getting 5,000 after one month or 20,000 after a month. He makes it in a way that uh, it is not clear. Laban says, uh, now your, your work is to take care of the sheep. Now, Mr. Jacob, any sheep that is born from today, 
that has spots, black and the blue, that is yours. The most, the rarest. <laughs> but God's favor is still with him. That whatever is declared, God causes all the sheep to give birth to that kind of color. I love this. Oh, wait, wait. We have to review. We have to review. We have to review. Uh, my nephew, let us review again. Now we are going to change the deal. Now, anytime you get uh, any lamb that is born, that is green, that will be yours. That will be yours. But God's favor works again. They start giving birth to green. And he says, no, 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 no. Let us review once again. Ten times the wages were changed. But the favor of God was still working with the jackal. And that period is gone. Do you know what God did? He transferred what Laban had to jackal. But is it easy? Is it just working easily? No, it is not easy. You realize that uh, Jacob has to be persistent. I don't know how many of us uh, will continue to work. Even after things are changing, you know, your salary was this much, now it has been changed. You know, it is this much. Now it has changed again. It is this much. Some of us say, ah, what? But he's not willing to give up. All right. At the end of it, something else happens. A time comes when Jacob wants to go back home. But Laban is not willing to release him. Why is he not willing to release him? Because he has realized God is with this man. And as long as he is with Jacob, he will continue to be wealthy. You know, it's what we call kitega uchumi. He realizes this man has favor with God. And as long as I am with him, I will be blessed. So he is not willing to allow him to go. But it took God to intervene for Jacob to leave. So what am I saying? There is something I'm learning from Jacob. That after God gave him wonderful promises, things did not work, just work without any effort. So after pastor has said it is a year of soaring, don't expect that things will work without any effort. Don't just sit down and expect things will work. Don't expect to sow without doing anything. Don't expect that there shall be no opposition. Don't expect that there shall be no hardships. But you have to be persistent. So let me look at the three. Three virtues that I learned from Jacob, which enabled him to succeed in the midst of many, many challenges. Number one, he was hardworking. He was hard working. The sheep were not just giving birth without feeding them. He had to feed them. He had to water them. He had to take care of them. He had to work hard for God's favor to manifest in his life. So don't sit down and expect to sow. There is work to be done. There is work to be done. Why don't you say amen? There is work to be done. Everybody should hear this. Kuna kazi. Ambia jirani yako kazi. I know some people don't like to work. But this year you are going to be saved. Oh, I was not talking about you. I was talking about others who did not come to the service. We have to work. We have to fold our shirts and work. For us to soar. Number two, Jacob is persistent. We have to be persistent. There are times you may work and never see anything coming out. I challenge you to put more efforts, trust God again, and do it in the name of Jesus. Osiogope, continue working hard. Continue, 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 and something shall work along the way in Jesus' name. If Jacob was not persistent, he wouldn't have gotten Rachel. 
After working seven years. That is a long, that's a long period. Seven years. And he stored another seven years. By the way, after looking at it, I realized uh, it was 14 years for, for Rachel. Because the other one, he did not work for, he was not working to get Leah. He was working to get Rachel. After seven years, he was told, now work again seven years to get the one you needed. So, 14 years. How many men are willing to go for that period? You know, men give up easily. But not the ones who are here today. But ladies can persist. Somebody said, uh, if men were the ones who carry pregnancy, kama wazendi wangetukua wanabeba mimba, wangebeba moja tu. No second point. No, no, no. Ah, that thing is tough. <laughs> but ladies are persistent. They, you know, they carry the pregnancy for nine months. They go through a process of delivery, which uh, I believe is not fun. After one year, Ladies, able to pick here my dad and my coffee, man. Ladies, God bless you. Ladies, kick. God bless you. It may not be easy. <laughs> so it takes persistence. Persist, persist. And number three, which is the last one, is trusting in God. Much as he was working hard, he knew the father of his father, the God of his father the God of his father, who is able to bless. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter how hard you work. If you don't involve God, it may be in vain. So as you do whatever you do, involve God in your work, and the Lord shall bless you in Jesus' name. The Bible says, and let the Lord build the house, the builders labor in vain. Involve God. He involved God. God is the one who was causing Favor to come upon him, that whatever is declared, God would cause, you know, the lambs to give birth to that kind of color. And so, God must be involved in your life for you to succeed. So, having said so, I have said, number one, hard work. Number two, persistence. And number three, trusting in God. That is what, that is what it takes to sow for today. We shall see more and more. But you need persistence for you to soar. You need hard work for you to soar. You need to trust God for you to, to soar. If you look at that ego, you, you like that glory. The glory where you rise above the storms. You rise above the storms. But let me tell you about the training for the ego to soar. It will go through vigorous training. That when the ego has been racing eaglets, the young ones, and a time comes now, she realizes they must now start soaring on their own. He makes the nest very uncomfortable. He brings thorns and put them on the nest. So the, the young ones have to leave because there is no comfort anymore. Then he takes them on her back. And he goes up very high. Then he dives a bit. And they struggle. They have never flown. They have never soared. So they struggle like any other newcomer in, in, in any field. But he waits for them before they, they, they hit the ground. The mother picks them. And goes higher a bit and dive a bit. They struggle. They struggle. But they are still learning. They are learning. They are in a flying school. They are learning how to fly. It is not comfortable. Then the mother goes up even more, higher. Then dives and it goes forever. Whoever survives has qualified to soar. So let me tell you, it takes persistence. It takes hard work. 
And you need to trust God for you to sow. Praise the Lord. God has desired that you sow. But there is work to be done. There is persistence. And you need to trust him. This year we are going to sow. But don't worry if you encounter challenges. Don't give up. If it doesn't, if it doesn't work just uh, naturally. Allow God to work with you and within you in the name of Jesus. I remember when I came to this church, there are things God spoke to me. That uh, this is the place where I want you to serve me. I will be with you in this church. I will bless you in this church. I will do this in this church. But do you think there was, there's not, there has been no challenges? There has been challenges. Challenges have been coming. But God still stands by his word. Praise the Lord. So I don't know what you're experiencing. Doesn't matter. But God remains faithful to his word. Whatever he said, he shall perform it. So somebody may ask, and if God is powerful, why is it that people have to go through challenges? <laughs> There's a time we were ministering to one, uh, one soldier, I don't know, in uh, Langata Barracks. We were going there for evangelism. We were telling him about uh, things of salvation. And you know, having been trained uh, in military, whatever he knew is that uh, if anything does not agree with what you want them to do, you just shoot. So he was asking us, you say God is powerful than the devil? We say, yes, God is powerful than the devil. Then he says, why is it that God has not shot the devil? You know, he's trained to shoot. And he wonder why is he wasting time with the devil? Why can't he shoot him and the story is finished? We enjoy life. Hallelujah. And then the men of you are saying, hey, yes, yes, tell us, pastor. Why is he not shooting the devil once and we enjoy life? Yes, yes, yes. God has ways of dealing with things. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So allow God to do his work. But he is powerful than the devil. And let me prophesy to you now as I close this service. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter what you are told. It doesn't matter what you experience today. You are going to succeed in Jesus' name. You will succeed in Jesus' name. God is not in a hurry with the devil. He has to take the process that he desired. So we are going to soar up with wings above the storms. The same song. Uh, we are going to sing it. If we can have it projected, we can join you, all of us. So the ego has power to soar above the storms. Storms normally come before the ego. But God has given the ego the grace to rise above the storms. And that is the grace we ask God to give us, that we may soar above the storms. The storms will be there, but there is grace to soar above the sea. May we just stand on our feet as we sing this song from the bottom of our, of our hearts, that these storms will come, but we shall soar above them by the grace of our God. Thank you, Lord.
close this service, you may be going through very uncomfortable season. Very uncomfortable season. Just as it happened to Jacob. But I want to assure you, the Lord is with you. I want to say it again, the Lord is with you. And the Lord who is with you will take care of you. He will see you through. If you are that person, as we make this prayer, just connect by faith, by raising up your hand, and we shall stand with you, we shall pray with you. This message has come for a purpose. It is not by accident. It is not because there was no other message to be preached, but it has pleased God to speak to your situation that though it is uncomfortable now, God is going to fight your battles. You shall win that battle in the name of Jesus. And there is a season of celebration that is coming soon. There is grace God has released over your life. You are going to conquer in the name of Jesus. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He said the good work he has begun. He is faithful to complete it until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for everyone who is going through a season of hardship. Them that are having challenges of life. Possibly financially. Matters of family. Matters of health. Matters of uh, life, oh dear Lord. Your eyes can see what I don't see. Your ears can hear what I don't hear. And so we release your power over every situation, over every individual, over every circumstance, over every hardship, over every barrier over every opposition, over every obstruction, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let the resistance melt now. Let the obstacles melt now. Let the barriers be removed now. Let the power of the cross deal with the challenges in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for somebody who is giving up. There's somebody who is giving up. There's somebody who has contemplated suicide. But God is speaking to you. It is not time to go that direction. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans of good and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. So cheer up, child of God. Rise from the dust. The Lord is with you. The one who began that good work will complete it until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, may you encourage the discouraged. May you rise those who are down. Lord, may you help them to dust themselves and to trust you as they move forward. We thank you for you are with us. You are doing a new thing in our lives. For this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen and amen and amen. And amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So everyone who is hearing me, cheer up in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you in the name of the Lord, move forward in Jesus' name. And so as we close the service, we have an opportunity to give to the Lord. We are going to give you a chance to bless the work of the Lord. You need an envelope. You can find one. Ashes are moving around. You can pick an envelope. If you need to give your tithe, you need to give your fast fruits, you need to give your thanksgiving offering, you can get an envelope. If you need to do so through M-Pesa, we are soon projecting the pay bill number. You can comfortably do that through the pay bill number. And for those who are giving our regular offering, you shall give it direct through the offering basket. Let's pray for our offerings now. Father, we are very grateful for the opportunity to give to you. We are not giving because you don't have, but we give because 
we are coming to honor you, declaring that you are the giver of every good thing. Father, I pray may you bless every giver. May you reward every giver. May you reciprocate to every gesture of giving. And bless us as we begin on a new week. Receive all the glory and honor. For we pray this trusting and believing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And we are free. Thank you.